Coming up today on Houston Life, the high-speed bartending competition aimed at ending breast cancer. Meet the 2021 champ who brought the win to H-Town. Plus, you may remember him as the lead singer of the R&B boy band B2K. We are checking in with Grammy Award winner Omarion about his latest tour, which stopped in Sugarland. Then is your kid ready to go trick-or-treating alone on Halloween? The recommendations from Crime Stoppers of Houston for a safe time during the spookiest season of the year. And from marigolds to sugar skulls, get ready to celebrate Dia de los Muertos. Find out where you can join in the fun this weekend at a free community celebration of Latin American folk art traditions. All that happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life. It is Monday, October 25th. I'm Courtney Savala. Hi, Courtney. Hi, everybody. I'm Derek Shore. It's so good to see you. It's good to see you. It's been a few days, and what a beautiful weekend. we got to talk about the Strohs in just a moment. Talk about kicking off the weekend right on oh, Friday night with that big win. It was perfect. We're going to have more on the Astros, of course, but big weekend not really a big weekend. We were all celebrating, of course, the Astros. But, you know, last week we were, I was in Round Top yeah. with our photographer, Paul, my producer, Aaron. So, you know, when you're working, you don't really get to play a lot, right? Or shop a lot. Right. This is what you're getting at, right? <laughs> I so, knew it. You went back to shop, didn't I you? I went back to Round Top yesterday and with my friend Kim. We had such a great time. We went to Mescalito Coffee, which is this great uh, shipping container coffee stop in Round Top Village. Then we rehydrated with the pop-up of the Ellis, Ellis Motel, Motel Bar. This is at the Arbors. And, um, you know, we just shopped until we dropped. This is a sign that I saw at one of the boutiques. Can can I have an amen? Astros going to the World Series. Yeah. So I just yelled amen <laughs> for no reason. You know, that was my reason. But then people just said amen back. I mean, it was great. <laughs> we had so much fun. I, I heard from a ton of, uh, of viewers and vendors and people shopping. They were like, thank you so much for coming to Round Top last week. It was so fun that you were here shopping and, and showing this on Houston Life because, you know, the vendors need it. Round Top needs it. We all need it. And so it was just really fun to connect with, with people in Round Top. It was Fantastic. And even though the big sale happens in April and also in October, you can go to Round Top year round. Year round. And, you know, a lot of the boutiques are open year round there. Of course, Round Top Village and Hinkle Square and, you know, all these other places now that are, are open limited hours. So it's definitely not Monday through Friday, but like, you know, Wednesday, Thursday and the rest of the weekend. And um, and, and there's there's uh, boutiques that are open there and, and coming there because the need is there, which is so great. Well, and the need just to escape Houston once in a while, to have a little weekend away. It's only an hour and 20. It's a day trip, folks. Get on out there. Well, I'm glad you had a good time. It was so much glad fun. You, you were time. busy. I was just doing house stuff. So Brandon's out of town, and I've been doing stuff around the house all weekend. Saw some friends for some dinners, and, you know, it was a good time. But this morning, I had to get up early and wear a tux. You know, it's after you've had a long weekend, it's sort of like, oh, my gosh, Monday's here. Got to put Gotta on get the tux. Dressed. But I went and picked up little tux man at the groomers. He was so well-behaved and so sweet. And we went up to the Heights where we did a little photo shoot for Pet Talk magazine. This is for their December issue. And Courtney, I know you know these folks, uh, Michelle and Gabby and Allison. We had a really good time. And uh, I can't show you the finished shot just no. yet, but there's a bit of behind the scenes. And they were so impressed by Texas. <laughs> I mean, he was seated next to me on this little velvet chair. And the ladies were like, holy cow, he's just like sitting looking yeah. at the camera. No, yeah. listen, he knows when it's time for a photo. Yeah. He is ready. He's wait I mean he got, you know, perfectly quaffed with his fur. So, I mean, he's just ready. Yeah, he's good to he's go. He's like you. Oh, uh, yes. Takes a good photo always. Oh, come on. I have plenty of bad photos, I promise I do. And um, oh, do we have the, the Pet Talk magazines, the Blast of the Past? Because I, I was just in one with oh, Oscar. Oh, yes, of course. And you guys, you know, I mean, it was so much fun. This is Oscar, such a great shot. I, I loved it. I, I loved hanging Oscar, out with him. Oscar, he's as big as you. He is. Um, and then um, I was also in Pet Talk magazine in 2013. No. Yes, that's me. And it, along with, well, I, that's a dog. That's that, not your dog. No. <laughs> oh, okay. No, that was not my dog. I don't remember the dog's name. But Look it, the at dog you, was up cutie. for adoption. And that was at Discovery Green, shortly after Discovery Green had opened. Yeah. And somebody else was in that edition of the magazine. Who's that? We just figured this out today. 
No, who was it? Lauren Kelly. Kelly. Look at that. I know. Again, not her cat, but that cat was up for adoption, oh. and I'm sure the dog and the cat are in lovely homes And now. along with Chad Pitt. So those that, that's her, like, radio team, right? Yeah. They all had adoptable animals. So cute. That's very nice. But it, keep it in the fam, you know? We yeah. love Pet Talk Magazine. Love uh, keep, keeping up with them. And again, it's all about adoption, so I love that you and Tex are in there, too. Just showing and spreading the word about Tex and how we got him. Yeah, and we adopted him. Of A memory from three years ago popped up on my phone the other day, and it was little baby, three pounds text the oh. day I went to the Houston SPCA and he was so scared he kind of backed away. I still can't believe someone gave him up but our, yeah. our thank, thankfully someone did because we got Their him. Their loss so is our gain. It's sure. fantastic. Okay so we are excited about the Astros of course going to the World Series. We have home field advantage. Before we get into all the stuff you know it was just announced. Lance McCullers Jr. out for the World Series. Oh, yeah, yeah, so that's a bummer, major bummer. Um, he hasn't pitched since game four of the ALDS, so we kind of knew he'd be questionable, but to hear it and see it in writing, mm. more on that, of course, uh, in sports and online, click to Houston.com. But Charlie Morton, former Astro, is going to take, uh, is going to pitch the first game for Atlanta. I still love Charlie. He was great mm. when he was an Astro and, and still a great pitcher. Um, but man, I got to tell you, electrifying. Our city is just feeling the excitement for the World Series, right? It gives me chills just looking at these photos. Uh, I was out at dinner with Christine Noel, who you know, Courtney, and our viewers know as well. We were out at Capitol Grill in City Center and just seated at the bar. Yeah. And it's so much fun to watch the game in that setting because everybody is cheering and losing their minds. And I just keep having flashbacks to a few years ago. I, f I feel like we're going to take it all the way this year. It's so good. I mean, I just, it, it's redemption. It's, it's all the things. And this team is hungry. Plus, we have home field advantage. So I'm Really excited about that. I know. The first two games, I mean, on home turf, that is fantastic. Well, listen, as you know, tomorrow night is game one of the World Series when the Strohs will take on the Braves at Minute Maid Park. And the next day, Courtney, two of our viewers, or one of our viewers, could have the chance to watch game two. That is right. Once again, we're doing a ticket giveaway, this time for Wednesday's game. All you have to do, you know the drill by now, you've got to be a KPRC2 insider. That's the only way you win. Yeah. It's so easy. You can do it right now. It's totally free. All you have to do is visit our website, click to Houston.com slash insider, or simply, you see the giant QR code on your screen, put your camera, your phone up there, and it'll direct you correct to the area where you need to go to fill it yeah, out. Yeah, like you're going to take a picture and then the link will pop up. As an insider, by the way, you can enter once per day. So every single day, log in and enter. The contest does end tomorrow night at 7 p.m. The winner will be announced on our 10 p.m. newscast tomorrow. And again, this is for game two, Wednesday's game, game two of the World Series. It feels so good to say those it words. It feels so good to say it. I'm so excited too. Okay, by the way, this is still talking about the Astros. Did you see SNL this weekend? Oh yeah. I know, yes. okay, super fun. So Jason Sudeikis, he was hosting and he brought back one of his popular characters, of course, the, the devil, devil stopped by for weekend update to catch up and throw some shade our way. Did you did you catch it? Take a listen. Well, it's just great to see you, Devil. You yeah. know, we, we haven't seen you in like four or five years. Oh, yeah, it's because I've been busy, baby. Yeah, you know, <laughs> last few years have been pretty good for old Beelzebub. <laughs> yeah, well, congratulations. What have you been working on lately? Oh, man, so many little side projects, you know, earthquakes, got some killer storms, Instagram for kids. Oh, you know, yeah, I'm trying to get it off the ground. Yeah, and you know, and I'm also into sports. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, yeah, I've been sticking my fork in sports. Uh, you know, I, I mean, you saw that the Astros won. Yeah. They yeah. shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, that was funny. Uh, we can't escape, but it's good to see him in that role, right? I mean, it was fun to see. I love him. I love him so much. I just watched one of his films <laughs> over the weekend, too, The Millers with Jennifer Aniston. That is a crazy movie. It's a crazy movie. But once again, people are picking at the Astros, people. So guess what? Make fun of us all you want, because when we have that trophy... Again. Again. Maybe the jokes will subside just a little bit. I know. Uh, you know what? And I, I got kind of down the rabbit hole a little bit from some of the Atlanta sports writers online, and it's it's not it's not terrible. You know, I mean, they're they're talking about the scandal, of course, but they're also talking about the credibility of this team and who's on it and how great they are. And I mean, I, I was impressed with some of the Atlanta writers. I didn't read everything, so okay. don't get nervous. I didn't read everything, but I know you still have a, a bone to pick with some of these national commentators, though, because clearly when they are calling a game or announcing a game, they they sometimes show their bias. They really do. Joe Buck was real quiet. <laughs>
I know you love Joe Buck. Hey, this story really caught my eye. So there's this CEO over in the UK, and he went on LinkedIn to sort of reach out to his professional network okay. for advice. He posted a, this question saying, hey, I had an employee come to me requesting paternity leave because he got a new puppy. N what? Yes. So a lot of people weighed in. I mean, literally thousands of people weighed in with their comments. Some people said uh, <laughs> that the world has gone mad and I can't believe people are requesting time off for having a dog. But, you know, a lot of people pointed out that when you have a new puppy, sleepless nights, cleaning up messes, running around after a pup while trying to, you know, hold down a full time job, it then takes don't a get toll a, on. Don't get a dog. Oh. <laughs> I'm just Holy cow. That's no, is that awful. terrible? Well, I mean, one would say that similarly, then, when you have a new baby, if you're not sleeping and you're cleaning up messes and, you know, it takes a while to get into your rhythm. It, it might. Yes, it definitely takes a little bit to get in the rhythm when you get a puppy. But you think the idea of taking time off work to deal with a puppy is ridiculous? Yes. Really? Listen, Oscar's going to be two. How long do I have to put that paternity leave situation in? Oh, I don't know. You could. Yeah, I don't know if we have a policy here about that. Uh, but what I'm saying, doesn't it seem kind of silly? Well, I think it is. Derek, world, it does. I can totally understand why someone would be stressed out. And but then you're going to upset the goldfish people and the rattlesnake people and the hamster people and the cat people. I mean, where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line? A puppy's a little bit different than like a snake in a cage. How do you know? <laughs> How do you, and, uh, if the light's on for the um, salamander? In this more flexible dragon. work time of like post-COVID, I think a bit of flexibility to deal with a new puppy might be good. Mm -mm. I'm out on that. I knew you would love this story. <laughs> I love it. You're too young to be so bitter. Still to come, find out what item had Harrison Ford questioning <laughs> what's in his wallet. Oh, okay. That's a good tease. But first, why don't we check in with Lauren Kelly, who's celebrating a Latin tradition honoring past family members. Hi, Lauren. You guys, look at this beautiful setup. Coming up on this weekend, Mecca Houston is celebrating their two-day Dia de los Muertos Festival. I will tell you how you guys can be a part of it and be a part of this community ofrenda when Houston Life returns. Welcome back to Houston Live. Harrison Ford, we love him, right? Love him. Indiana Jones 5 in production, right? It's shooting in Sicily. It is? It's happening, but something bad happened in oh. production. Oh. During a break from shooting, Harrison Ford lost his credit card. Oh. This is why we're talking about it, though. A good Samaritan found it, turned it into police. They recognized his the name. The name. And they turned it into police, and he was reunited with the credit card. That's a, a screenshot of our clicktohouston.com article about it. I think, you know what, there are good people in the world, right? I think so because too. to be able to return something to somebody famous because they recognize the name or not, right? Whether it's just a non famous person or a famous person, regardless, they got it back to him. What would you do if you found a credit card, though? Because I, this happened to us. We were trying to take a ferry somewhere and someone had left it in the yeah. machine and we pulled it out. We're like, oh no, we called the credit card company and I said, could you just freeze this card? Because I felt weird about giving it to someone. Right, right. What would you do? I actually turned Turned it in. I think we've also run uh, after somebody out the door, like, hey, your credit card's here. But you know, Orlando lost his wallet on the bike trail. Um, it fell out of his pocket. Six months later, it showed up on our doorstep. Wallet, credit cards, insurance card, everything intact in that wallet. I still can't believe I that. I still story. can't either. I wonder how it got there. I don't know. Somebody found it and just, you know, on it your was, doorstep or like it was they mailed, mailed it. To you. No, they mailed it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They mailed it. And then this ring, um, my my ring. This is my first Mother's Day gift from Orlando. I lost it at Nordstrom at Nordstrom Rack. Six months later, I got a phone call from the manager there and they found my ring. It's all your good karma coming back. Well, I don't you know what there are. Again, it goes back to there are good people that want to help and return things to each other. Yeah. Right. Let's bring in Joe Sam, who's standing by with our question of the day. This is a real good talker, Joe. It is because, you know, I got that bad karma. Coming I know what you're doing. You're keeping everything. You, you know, it, right. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear from you guys. What was the time or when was the time that something that you lost was returned to you? And we have all of those answers coming in like we love to get from our Facebook viewers. Let's see if we have some good people. 
people out here. Kristen, she wrote, I left my wedding ring on the bathroom counter of a hotel on Valentine's Day, which was 27 years after, get that, my husband proposed with it. I got it back and returned it to the hotel a couple weeks later with a reward for the housekeeper. Oh, That's that sweet story. of her, right? Yes. So sweet. Carl writes in, lost my wallet at the academy one night. Later that night, the store manager drove all the way to my house to oh. return it. Now, that's a good store manager. Very good, Carmen. Very. Because I would just called and said, hey, come pick it up from the store. <laughs> but look, Christine, she writes in, I lost my license at the Texans game and had no idea until I received it in the mail with a lovely handwritten note, but no information on who found it. Thankfully, it arrived just a couple of days before I was boarding a flight for vacation. I'm still grateful. Aw, heart emoji for her. Of course, head over to our Houston Life Facebook page and join that conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little later on in the show. Courtney, you told us what you lost. And now we have to figure out from Derek, too. What is something that was returned back? So typically, I, I just don't lose things. I, I'm typically aware of like where my phone and wallet are. And now, Unless you're on the phone. Right. Where's my phone? <laughs> yes. Or like I'm, when you're looking for your, your sunglasses or you're wearing them. On your head. And I have to say, now <laughs> I just, I lose things by hiding them from myself. It, does that make sense? Yes. Like, I know, it's not that I oh. lost it on a train or in a taxi or anything. Um, Brandon did live it, leave his wallet in an Uber once, and luckily, the person who got in it was our neighbor. Oh, and like, oh I Brandon remember that, that. yeah. And brought it back. I brought it back. Yeah. You guys are lucky, because my wallet was lost, and they took the credit card, the little cash that they had in it, and everything else, even the license. Mm. Makes up for the groceries you kept last week, Joe. That's true. I, so I said, the bad karma <laughs> coming back on me. It's coming I'm kidding. Back. I'm kidding. It's coming back, so I got to spread more good good karma around to get it back in return. <laughs> I, I understand it. All right, <laughs> Joe, thank you. Keep those comments coming. Well, Dia de los Muertos honors the souls of the dead in a lively, cheerful celebration beginning on November 1st. It's such a beautiful, beautiful celebration, too. Now in its 21st year, Mecca's Dia de los Muertos Festival is fun. It's free community celebration, and it's happening this weekend. Lauren Kelly is live there now with a peek at the upcoming festivities. Hi, Lauren. Hey guys, you know what? I'm learning so much about everything that does go in to a Dia de los Muertos festival, including the ofrenda, which translates to offering. And here to talk all about it is Mecca's ofrenda exhibit curator. This is Luis Gavito. Thanks for talking with us today. Well, I'm glad you're having us here. You know, we're learning all about this. This is a La Catrina, and okay. these are the faces you see on the women's skeletons in the ofrenda. Correct. For people who don't know what it is, explain to us about this beautiful exhibit. As you said, La Ofrenda is an offering, and what it is, it's a memorial for our ancestors, for our uh, uh, lo uh, loved departed ones. And you see that there are a lot of pictures here. Usually, these are Mexican-inspired, so we have three-level or three-tiered ofrenda. The first tier is dedicated to the celestial. So you usually say a saint, or in this case, the Virgin Mary. Okay. The second tier, you have the pictures of the loved ones. Okay. And then on the last tier, you have uh, things, the foods that they liked, little objects from their little lives, trinkets. and so on. Trinkets. Now, Luis, I, I saw over here, we saw a very familiar item from one of my favorite movies, Coco, which was, you know, completely engaging in the ofrendas, but you haven't even seen the movie yet, but you are knowing that Miguel's guitar is here, you have the dog that was Dante, and those all have very specific meanings, and not just a beautiful piece of the movie as well. Absolutely. Each each part has a significant, like for instance, you see all the yellow flowers yeah. in Nahuatl, which is the language of the Mexica from Mexico. Those are called Sempasuchil. Now, first of all, it's a very inexpensive flower, okay. but secondly, it has a very strong aroma. So it's thought that the aroma itself attracts the spirits on the November the 1st and November the 2nd to come I just, and visit. I have to point out how beautiful this setup is. And this is just one portion of the setup. This is the community of Frenda, which is now open and available for guests to come in. And if you want to drop something off here, you can do that. The festival is going to happen this weekend. Tons of information coming up a little bit later on during Houston Life about the details of the festival. Louise, thank you so much. I'm going to send very it welcome. back to Derek and Courtney in studio now. But what do you think? Maybe for next year's Halloween costume, guys? Oh, it's, it's beautiful. That it would be really beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love the display, too. It's so pretty and colorful. Thanks, Lauren.
Thanks for sharing that. When we come back, before your kids head out the door this Halloween, don't miss helpful tips to ensure they have a safe time while trick-or-treating. It's very important. And as we head to break, we want to remind you about the MD Anderson Boot Walk to End Cancer. It is right around the corner, happening Saturday, November 6th. People around the world will walk 1.2 miles in their own neighborhoods and track their walks virtually, showing that together we can give cancer the boot. There is no registration fee and no minimum fundraising raising requirement. If you would like to register, you can. And for more information, visit MDAnderson slash bootwalk and stay right there because Houston Life will be back right after the break. Okay, the countdown is on, of course, this Sunday. Little ghouls and goblins will be roaming around our neighborhoods for a night of trick-or-treating fun. But how can we make this a safe occasion for our children? Rania Mancarios, Executive Director with Crime Stoppers of Houston and the host of the Balanced Voice podcast, joins us now with her tips for a danger-free Halloween. It's always great to see you, Rania. Thanks so much. Hey. Always great to see you. Thank you for having me. We were just having this conversation at home. So my boys, just to refresh memory, 10 and soon to be 14. And let's just get this the first question out of the way. When is it OK to send a child out and about to trick or treat alone? No parents. When is that when is that OK? That is the biggest question I get. And I have a golden rule, if you will. So I always say, look, sit your kids down and talk to them about the real risks and the real dangers. Map out different things that they may encounter if the friends that they're with want to change your route or run off in a direction they're not allowed to go to. If they're approached by somebody that makes them uncomfortable or somebody falls and get injured and see what their response is. If they feel like, okay, wait, Let's talk about this, mom. Let's talk about this, dad. I understand. Here's what I would do. They're telling you they might be mature enough to actually go out alone. If in the conversation they're, you know, I don't want to talk about this. That's not going to happen. I, I don't want to even think about it. That's scary. They're telling you they're not mature enough to go. Now, of course, hopefully nothing is going to happen. But should something happen, they are not mature enough to handle it. It's best if you're still with them. You know what? I might be probably, they might be 18 and I'll be right there. Yes. I like to go too. I just like to see everyone, you know, walk around. Do give them a little bit of freedom, of course. But I love that. <laughs> Having that conversation and listening to those key words, I think, is really important. Let's also talk about the dangers of just being a pedestrian. We live in a big city. We have to remember that cars are still part of the road on most of our routes, right? And some, some neighborhoods do block off. But at the end of the day, cars are still trying to get home, right? Yeah, I mean, people forget that there are still, yes, cars on the road. People still need to get places. Halloween doesn't stop, you know, everybody's to-do list. And it's actually the number one most dangerous holiday for kids and pedestrian injuries. So we want kids to be aware of that. Walk on the sidewalk. Walk on the sidewalk. Wear reflective tape. Plan your route in advance. There are some of us that will live in a neighborhood where we're, we're near very busy roads, and, and that's okay. Uh, but just have an idea of where your kids should cross, not cross. If we get separated from each other and they're going first, how are they going to handle some of these major roads? These are really, really easy conversations to have, but they're critically important, especially on Halloween. And I think it's important, too, because you remember they're all in costumes, right? And some of these are very dark, so having some sort of light source on you and really pay attention to the masks as well. Absolutely. You know, I'm always in shock still when I'm taking my kids early in the morning to do drop offs, et cetera. People are running. It's still dark and you literally can't see them. Now, those are usually adults, but we want kids who are quick and small, oftentimes shorter than your eyesight to really be wearing reflective tape. Make it really obvious. Have lights. Do whatever you need to have to make it obvious that your kids are there. Absolutely. Some of those things are super inexpensive, too, on Amazon that can get to your door uh, by tomorrow. Let's also also talk about some of the other dangers that maybe some people don't want to uh, think about on a Halloween, especially on a holiday, but it's something that we need to uh, think about is who's living around the corner, where are they trick or treating, right? Know your route and know who, what door you're going up to. Yeah, and it is the law in Texas that a registered sex offender has to keep their lights off. They're not going to be inviting people to their homes, but we also know that kids are kids and 
even if the lights are off, they may want to go and ring the doorbell or kind of look around and see what's on the property. So we want to remind kids that if the lights are off, you know what, we're just going to skip the house. We also want to think about who's walking around with us. If somebody approaches us or asks us an uncomfortable situation, now today is the day of social media. If they start FaceTiming or Instagramming live, what are your rules on that? What are you expecting of your kids? Do you allow them to be in people's videos or in people's photos or not? Unfortunately, in today's world, uh, I wish everybody was well-intentioned, but unfortunately, that's not true and it's not reality. So it's really important that we talk to kids about that. Absolutely. A great conversation for sure. We have about 30 seconds left, Rania. Let's talk about the trick-or-treating and COVID. We're still in a pandemic. Yeah, of course, this is outdoors. That's great. If you're going to be indoors, you've got to social distance or wear a mask. Obviously, um, be careful about candy and stuff that you grab. Make sure it's prepackaged when you give it out. And maybe talk to your kids about the fact that to this year is trick-or-treating for fun, but we may, may not be eating everything we get. It might just be a fun holiday. Get together, walk around, enjoy your neighborhood. All great points, Rania. It's always wonderful to catch up with you. And uh, good luck on the gala. I know that you have the Crime Stoppers <laughs> gala just around the corner. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Courtney. And to connect with Rania of Crime Stoppers Houston, we do have a link on the Scene on Houston Life section of our website. That's HoustonLife.tv. Derek, we're going to send it over to you. All right, Courtney, thanks for that. Coming up, how a local bar manager competed three times in a national bartending battle before earning the championship title, and it's all for a good cause. And we'll get a check of what is coming up on the news at 4 o'clock, including a way for your kids to combat bullying. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Monday. Yeah. New start of the week. I World know. Series week. <laughs> World Series week. It feels good. Earlier in today's show, we asked, when is a time something you lost was returned to you? Let's get to some of your comments now. Hannah writes in, my husband lost a heavy key to a room at our resort while we were snorkeling. It fell out of his swim shorts. Someone snorkeling later that day found <gasps> it at the bottom of the sea. Wow, wow, that's very nice. Very lucky. Heather writes in, someone mailed a $1,500 check to me that they found on the sidewalk when I was living in Chicago. Luckily, I had already deposited but what a sweet stranger. Oh, maybe she did like a mobile uh, deposit, yeah, like a, so she still had the check. But they sent the check back. Wow. Well, I guess they couldn't cash it themselves. That would be fraud. Uh, Terry writes in, my son lost his wallet on a school trip in New York City. Two days after he got back home, we received a call from the janitorial service at the restaurant where it was lost. There are still good people in the world. Oh Courtney and I were just chatting about this during commercial break. I think there are many more good people than bad people. Absolutely. But I'm loving hearing these positive stories on a Monday. I feel like it's setting the tone for some good energy. Oh, I think so too. Yes, I know. I love it. Let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for some more good energy for the news at four. I'm hey, it. hello. Yeah, I have a story. So 2003, 2004, I was uh, landed in New York, was get, getting a taxi to a hotel. I got in a hotel, got to my room, realized I, I had lost my phone and I left it in a cab, a taxi oh cab in New York City. So you're thinking, how in the world, you're never going to get your phone yeah. back in a cab. Yeah. yeah. And luckily I had my trusty Blackberry. And so I used that to call my phone and the cab driver picked it up. He said, hey, yeah, I found your phone. You left in the back seat. That's amazing. I I'm in like Queens now, but later on tonight, I'm coming back to Manhattan. I'll drop it off at the front desk. I was like, yeah, thank you. That's wow. I never thought I was going to get that thing back. Remember this happened to me while we were uh, covering the Olympics in Tokyo. I left it at the bus station you in did. the bathroom. That's right. And, and someone I left a note? to the bathroom, there was a note where I left. Like, it was like right on top of like the toilet paper dispenser. <laughs> I mean, of all places. Classy, I know. And it said, to the lady who lost her phone, it's at the desk, the front the desk. Lady. Well, here's the thing that we've just learned about you is you actually put the phone down when it, you're in use. Yes. So I, I you mean, are that I person. Do. You're that person. You're on the your phone in the stall. I didn't have my purse with me. I didn't have my purse with me, so I was like, yep, that's going right there. That's well, it's better than this. <laughs> Just that, saying. That's the healthy option, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. I yeah. love all these positive <laughs> stories. Yeah. Yeah. Christine does not use the phone when she's using the toilet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Things you learn, something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, they read between the lines. That's not my fault. Quite honestly, Keith, I thought you were going to say you lost your shoes or your clothes somewhere. Yes, I was because not my expecting shoes were tied. Yes, no, I see, but I know what I'm doing when I wear my shoes untied. <laughs> They've never, I've never lost them, you know, since I've been like six or seven. You tripped a few times. Oh, I know. Yes, you have. And I'm like, Keith.
teeth. <laughs> Darling. Well, they're, they're, tied, they're tied today. They're tied today. Yes, they oh, are. That's yes. a good way to start the week, Frank. You know? It is. Y'all are too funny. Okay. <laughs> I, have a, I have a lot of huge changes coming as we go through this week. And I think you're going to like them. First of all, it's summer out there, isn't it? Look at these temperatures. And the feels like numbers are even about six degrees warmer. 88, 91. The humidity is in the 60% range. It's muggly. Is that a word? It's just it's muggy it's ugly. Just made it. Like yes. It's muggly out there. <laughs> it's tough. If you've been out there, you know exactly what I mean. No rain to even cool us off. We may get a quick sea breeze shower tomorrow, but I would look for a lot there. This is the system that's going to change our world. That low, look at that spin right off of Seattle. That's going to continue to slide our way. All kinds of watches and warnings out there we'll talk about at 4 o'clock. But there's the front. I'm going to put a couple of pause points in here, and coming up at 4, we'll go close into this. But here's the general idea. And you can see there's the front Wednesday morning, 6 a.m., moving into our area to the west right over downtown at 10, 1030. By the time we get to Wednesday afternoon, this thing's in Louisiana, but what pushes it is wind. It's going to get really breezy around here, but it's also going to get really cool around here as we head into the Halloween weekend. So tomorrow's game looks a lot like today, maybe not quite as hot, but it's going to be warm and muggy. There's that slight chance for a 4 p.m. shower, and then we've got temperatures going right through 80, 76, 74 for game two. That's much different. Look at those 70s. So we got the game on Tuesday, the big front, and then the nice game on Wednesday. Mm. So I know it's a big roller coaster. We'll talk more about it, but summer through tomorrow, the big cold front's coming, and then a ghoul Halloween weekend. Okay, yeah. on a muggly Monday, Frank. I thank know. you, muggly. sir. <laughs> <laughs> right, look now some of the other stories that we're working on for the news at 4 o'clock. World Series, if you yep. haven't heard, coming to Houston. That means a big focus on the city and a lot of visitors. We will take a look at the economic impact we could see from that with those games right here in Houston. Yeah, plus preventing bullying. Studies show one in every five students report being bullied. A look at how parents can work with their children and help them through bullying situations. And where is the fruit? We will tell you about a lawsuit filed by a woman against Kellogg's because of Pop-Tarts, what she says she did not get in the product and what she wants to see more of. Hmm. The Pop-Tart Diaries, yeah, wow. Okay. Pop-Tart Gate. Pop gate, right. There Pop gate, there you go. I like that better. I like Mugly a lot, though, too. Yeah, that's a good one, Frank. I think we should adopt that. You got it. Mugly. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. See you soon. All right, y'all. If you're in the mood for some Monday motivation, this next story proves that if at first you don't succeed, just try, try again. Local bar manager Sarah Troxell did just that, competing in the National Bartending Competition Speed Rack three years in a row. This is such a cool event. This year, all her hard work finally paid off as she brought home the big win for H-Town. And even better than bringing home the championship, knowing it was all for a good cause, aiding the fight to end breast cancer. Hi, I'm Sarah Troxell. I'm the season nine Speed Rack National Champion. Three, two, one. Is a global competition designed to spotlight women in the industry. The whole competition is to donate money to charity. Over nine seasons, they've donated over a million dollars, um, which is really incredible amount of money um, towards breast cancer research and different breast cancer charities. How about that? <laughs> So the first time I ever competed was season six in 2016 and the regional competition was actually in Houston um, and I made it on stage to the top eight, which as a rookie, first time competitor, fairly new to the craft bartending world, um, I was super proud of myself just to make it on into top eight, which means you get to compete in the onstage competition. You basically have to make four craft cocktails as fast as you can, um, but you race against the person next to you to make them as best and as fast and as accurately and as beautifully as you can. And then you get penalties based on your wash line, missed ingredients, if they don't think your garnish is very pretty, if your drink is balanced, and whoever finishes with the fastest time after that moves on to the next round. So it's like round robin sports sports ball style. I was hooked. Um, this little competitive Scorpio was super into the competition side, but also like the network of women that Speed Rack has created over the past nine seasons is incredible. And like that is what motivates me to keep coming back and being a part of Speed Rack events. Nationals were in New York City, which was really rad. It was so nice to be back at doing a speed rack thing and feel the camaraderie and 
be with my friends and get to meet new people. I competed with 16 wonderful bartenders from all across the country. We're slowly getting back to normal as far as like competitions go and uh, it was just a really exciting like whirlwind of a, of a trip. Yeah. There's nothing like working really hard for a goal for four years and then crushing it and like I'm still not sure I fully unpacked all of those feelings so winning nationals is the top of speed rack and I'm ready to like make room for the next group of girls they have changed my life my career I don't plan on ever not being involved in speed rack in some way Congratulations, Sarah. Love hearing your story. By the way, Sarah works at the Toasted Coconut in Montrose if you want to see her in action. I feel like we're destined to be friends with Sarah. I think so, too. I'm just saying that. Cheers. Shaker and Spoon, which is a monthly cocktail subscription service, has partnered with Speed Rack on four limited edition cocktail kits to help raise funds for the pink agenda in the fight against breast cancer. Look how cute these are. So Adorable. every month they send you a cocktail kit with all these fun accessories and the mixers required to make a cocktail. You just add the booze. Right. Uh, sounds like a great deal to me. I've got the Como La Mujer, which is a Latin-inspired highball. It's scotch mango uh, with savory and spicy hints and a sweet rim around the top. And your kit is $43. I have the Citrus Paradisi, which is basically an effervescent and refreshing vodka, tonic, lime, citrus, green tea, and rose. And this one is $42 for this, uh, for this box. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it's really delicious. I love it. So good. Each mm. of the four cocktail kits were created by Speed Rack alums and include special edition speed rack swag as you can see right there in the box as well we do have full details on all of these cocktail kits on our website houstonlife.tv think holiday this is a great gift yeah. we know about all the shipping issues and all of that stuff this is a great holiday gift and yeah. congrats to sarah once again yeah, cheers absolutely cheers now let's check in with joe who's standing by who, after you chatted with a grammy award winner about his latest concert in houston hey joe hey guys yeah that's a good gift for the holidays but this person here they gave a gift to all of his fans out there we're talking about omarion all the fans flocked down to sugarland to hear the performance Yeah, that guy has to dance a little bit, but this is going to be having a lot of people dancing. We're talking about the Millennium Tour, over 14 million records sold worldwide. Award-winning performer, you can see him here behind me, performer and R&B artist Omarion returned to the stage in Sugarland with the Millennium Tour featuring popular artists like Bow Wow, Pretty Ricky, Lloyd Ashanti, and so many others. I chatted with him before the show to find out why it was selling out from state to state. Omarion is back on stage and not apologizing for the sold-out shows with his Millennium Tour, taking fans back 21 years to the music they fell in love with. To be able to encapsulate the 2000s, you know, um, in a sonic way and in a format of a show has um, been quite interesting. Not only are you on stage performing, you're doing that incredibly well, Thank but you also are an executive producer of this tour too. Yes. Talk about producing a tour like this on, on such a huge level and selling out everywhere. I mean, this is a huge accomplishment for you. To be able to do this as an artist in, in this particular time in my career is so important. You know, ownership, um, you know, you don't get to be in the game for 20 plus years and uh, don't have anything that you can call your own. Not only is he producing and headlining his own tour, but Omarion is Unbothered, which is the title of the new book he'll be releasing, along with his next studio album, Full Circle. I'm not sure that uh, any author has created a, you know, an album and a book <laughs> at the same time. So, hey, I did, so <laughs> boy, <laughs> I did it first. Soldier Boy, I did this first. Right. I'm the first R&B singer to do album and a book, and a at, book the same time. at the same time. <laughs> Speaking of time, Omarion has put so much of it into the music industry, becoming a recording artist in 2001 with his group B2K. And now as a solo artist, his shows are about the connection he's built with his fans through the years. A lot of our human conditions and our differences are just that. They're just differences. There's always going to be a meetup 
for different walks of life to come and connect. So really when people come to the Millennium Tour, I want them to connect. I want them to live in this moment, you know, share the music and also just enjoy themselves. Joy is a choice. Things happen, but you, you have to choose to want to be happy. You know, we gotta figure out what's your favorite thing here yes. in Houston. And I don't want them stalking you now. <laughs> we ain't gonna give them too much. Right. But you know what you like to see when do when you come here to H-Town? Papa Dolls. <laughs> Papa Dolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it a little you know, I'm a pop up, I'm gonna be at the bar. <laughs> there you okay. go. We'll meet you at the bar. <laughs> the city of Houston met Omarion with nothing but love, packing out every seat at the Smart Financial Center in Sugarland. It's the same kind of love that keeps him coming back to H Town, putting on a show that had everybody screaming, Oh. It's such a, 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 a beautiful place. It's just the people. I really want to highlight the people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's, there's many restaurants and places and nightlife to go to, but you gotta find your tribe. That's what I would say. If you're coming down to H Town, you know, make sure, you know, you walk down the street, you talk to some people, and, you know, just feel the, the energy and the culture of Houston. <laughs> It was an amazing concert. Now, if you missed a concert, don't worry. The tour is heading to Baton Rouge, Louisiana on November 17th. To see what other cities the tour will hit, just head over to our website, HoustonLife.tv. Now, for people who want to know, it's just about a four-hour drive, three, four-hour drive, well, three for me, because, you know, I'll be, on, I'll be getting it on the road. But for others, about a four-hour drive to get on down to Baton Rouge. If they missed it, and I would encourage them to go and see it because it was mind-blowing. Yeah, and oh. what a great conversation, too. Smart Financial is a great spot to see a concert. Beautiful venue. And so many people packed it out. So I was happy for Houston bringing in that money and happy for Mario and making sure he can continue to tour. Yeah, looks like a good time. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm. All right, why don't we uh, shift gears now, turning back to Lauren Kelly, who's gearing up to celebrate Day of the Dead happening this weekend. Hi, Lauren. Hey guys, you know what? From the food to the traditions to the performances, it's going to be an incredible weekend. The Dia de los Muertos Festival happening with Mecca Houston. We're going to take a look at all of those things, plus get into this beautiful Katrina headdress when Houston Life returns. Oh, six Ward. Oh, so. six Ward. That's right, what I right. Say. It's a beautiful historic <laughs> district. And so we have three performance stages available for you. We have an outdoor uh, adult stage. We have a children's outdoor stage and then one indoor. We have performances by the Blackguards, the Goods, uh, Mecca's own Ballet Folklorico, as well as Ambassadors International Folklorico. We have theater companies that are coming out to present some of their work, too. And a great section that we call Viejada, which is more of a procession type that is going to take place on the street, 1900 Kane Street, right in front with music and dance. Which I think the best part, Armando, is this is a free festival for the community, right? And not only do they get these wonderful performances, there's going to be traditional food, there's going to be face painting. Can you give us a little background on the Sugar Skulls face painting on the faces? Yes, so we have our visual artists here from Mecca are going to be leading this booth with some volunteers and we have options for half a face, full face, but what I'm really most excited about is that cuisine. We have community members, my own mother is making the mole, some of the parents are making the other dishes, so it's traditional cuisine from the Mexico area. You can't areas. get any more traditional, yeah. Armando, than having your own mom come yes. out and make food for this festival. I love it. It's going to be so much fun. Mecca, if people are interested, stands for Multicultural Education and Counseling through the Arts, and that's where we are here in this historic spot. Thank you so much for the information. We're going to have a great time at the Dia de los Muertos Festival this weekend. All of the info is at HoustonLife.tv. Your mom better save me some of that gotcha. delicious food, okay? Derek and Courtney, back to you guys in Studio B. Lauren, can we get the crowns there, the flower Beautiful. crowns? Beautiful. Uh, I will work on bringing you one back, Courtney, but this is a headdress with the veil. You know, it's absolutely magnificent. A little bit heavier, but nothing that you can't handle, okay? It's fantastic. It is so gorgeous. Thank you, Lauren. After Thanks. the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show when we check out the spooky sightings. Life will be right back. 
Coming up on the Tuesday edition of Houston Life, a spooktacular pet Halloween fashion show featuring dogs from Houston's SPCA looking for their forever homes. Okay, that's going to be so cute. You do not want to miss that. Then come for the history, stay for the haunts, a look inside downtown Rosenberg's historic coal theater that dates back to 1919, more than 100 years old. And that story is going to freak you out. It is unbelievable. So make sure you tune in for that. What a fun show on this Monday. It has been a great way to start off the day. I know, a little baby sleeping. He's tired from his big, big photo shoot this I morning. I know, Can see him? but he's as cute as a button. I, oh, your cocktail's in the way. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. There you hey, go. thanks to all of our viewers who've been sending all kinds of Halloween ideas for us. Uh, Halloween's just a few days away, so I guess we're going to have to find out how the costumes fall. I cannot wait. Let's toss it over to Keith and Christine now standing by for the news at four. Hey guys. Okay, can I be text for like just a day? I know. How right? do I get that job? Taking a nap behind a cocktail. <laughs> Not bad, right? Not Pretty bad. Good. Oh. <laughs>